Okay, so uh, today I'm going to carry on with, with this hatch. Um, I need to start on making the hatch viewport, which I've done the drawing for there. So I need to start that and uh, tempted to make this bit as well, which is the um, that bar that goes through, which is a little bit more complicated than it looks. Uh, so I think I might have a go at that first and then I'll make a start on doing this hatch viewport, which should be touch wood relatively straightforward. Sometimes it can be nice to machine stainless steel, just sometimes. Right, so I've turned this piece down to the inch and a quarter. To go on top and this is now at exactly 16 so I've got to go I'm aiming for 15.85 and this really shows where your lathe is lined up correctly or aligned I did do it not so long ago and it's an absolute pest I got it pretty good I can't remember what I got it but it was I remember thinking it was pretty good. So that's showing 15.95 I'm shooting for 15.85 I might just hmm go one tenth off I mean it's the most microscopic amount I might just do a spring pass I don't want to overshoot this So I'm 15.97, it's got to go a little bit more yet. Right, I've done another pass and we are fifteen point eight. Three uh, and and fifteen point eight seven at that end. So I might just take a little bit off of the sandpaper at this end. Well, I actually didn't need to. This is my, a sort of test bar that I've been using because I haven't actually got any 5.8s. I have ordered some. So that's uh, a piece of test bar. And that's exactly the same. So I'm pleased with that. Ooh, ow. Um, I might just put a little bit of a paper on here actually to help it over the o-rings so I'm just putting a little taper in just to help the uh, o-ring into its 
onto the thing one. I'm having to do this without any tail support, which is why it's making that noise. Dreaded chatter. It's only a very light cut, obviously, with no tail support. I'm just going to get one fraction more. in here now and it's going to go right just there dug in, didn't it? Right, I don't know whether I can rescue the part. Now. Right, new tool. Get right back into where it was. managed to rescue it. I don't know why it does. I must be, must be. Maybe it's... The only thing I can think is it's microscopically either too high or too low. I need to just... Even though I think I've set it on centre. Anyway, I think I've managed to rescue that. Right, so I have managed to rescue that over groove. Oops. Uh, so the last thing to do is to put a thread on here. And this isn't even powered, so surely we can get this right. sake 
just not working today, is it? Chocolate tap wrench. Anyway, I'm there, I think. Maybe I was just trying to go a tiny bit too far. I'm only getting that out off her. So I've still got to put some slots on the end of that. It's on the mill to uh, fit it on, but I'd like to have gone a little bit more with that thread. I might have to finish that off another time. You have to get a new uh, die wrench. Well, I found another wrench, exactly the same chocolate wrench but there we go let's uh, see if I can finish it off that's better right. I mean after all that's not actually turned out too bad let's actually see if it fits but it's a good idea She does, and I've forgotten to break that edge. But with the O-rings in, that'll be fine. Uh, and that's my extra O-ring on the other side. That's on top. Got to do this now. Or shall I just? Uh, that needs to be parted off and put some squares on it. And I need to put the flat on there. Now I think I'll do this. So I'm just doing the, uh, starting on the hatch viewport now. Um, so I'm just turning the, I've turned both faces and I'm turning the inside bore down to the final dimension of 80 millimeter. Um, I'm sort of doing this in reverse because I, because this is a bit smaller, I've got nothing to grip on the inside. So I need to open this, this opening out first. It doesn't make a lot of difference. So I've, I've turned this one out to nearly, <coughs> nearly final dimension on the, the base uh, of just stuff, really so I can get something to hold it like that. Now I can tackle the other side. trumpet but that is just superb. Our oh, carbon steel. Anyway. Right so uh, I've done another one of these. This time I put some little uh, ears on it. Uh, that was going to go in there like that except I forgot to remove that bit so I'll have to do it again but I've and I have sort of had a crack at the thread, kind of guessed it a bit, and it actually isn't too bad. It's a little bit sloppy. But what I think I'm going to do, I'm overthinking it. I'm just going to get a hose, clamp it around there, and then on here, I'm just going to make this with a pipe or a little bit of tube that's coming out and just clamp the hose on. Because I'll tell you what I want to do is I want to have the scrubber like that and the fan here on the top. Um, obviously not without this bit on it but the fan there on the top so it's all in one unit and then the hose can go from there 
uh, into the top, which I think is where it has to go. I can't remember, I need to look it up. So this is the very first time I'm looking at this. Look, I made a Jody B. Let me just uh, look at this. This is the first time I've done these funny tree supports. They just break off. My hands are filthy as well. I should probably wash them. Oh. Might have to... Might have to do a bit of poking with a screwdriver. Bear with me. There we go. I mean, it's a little bit rough on the bottom. I don't know whether you're supposed to sand where those supports were, but anyway, I thought that's quite cool.